In the name of Allah, today we are going to discuss the nerve supply of the abdominal viscerals, including the pelvic viscerals. So for this, you have to concentrate first on the right side of the board. Here, you can see a tubular structure which I have drawn to show the representation of the foregut. This part is representing the foregut portion and from here, this is the midgut part and below this is the hindgut part. So I have divided into three parts, the foregut, the midgut and the hindgut. Now we have to look into that how the autonomic nervous system is going to deal with this abdominal pelvic viscerals or the derivatives or all these uh, foregut, midgut and hindgut. Now look here that on the left side I have made the schematic uh, representation of the CNS. This is the medulla oblongata place and here you can see the spinal cord segments into, uh, I have drawn it into four parts. This is the cervical spinal cord uh, region, this is the thoracic spinal cord region, this is the lumbar one and this is the sacral one. And along the two sides of rather uh, this uh, spinal cord, I can draw the sympathetic chain on both sides and you can call it as thoracolumbar outflow. Here you can see that in the thoracic region, the now you can see the greater splenic nerve coming from the thoracic 5, 6, 7, 8 and 9 as a presynaptic nerve. It has to enter into the celiac ganglion and from here the post ganglionic fibers will commence and will run into the this celiac plexus which is formed around the celiac artery. Now uh, this has to uh, run as a periarterial plexus around the branches of the celiac trunk and now it has to enter into the foregut and the it will supply the derivatives of the foregut. Now we can see that there is thoracic T10 and T11. From here fibers commence forward passing through the sympathetic chain or trunk or paravertebral ganglia whatsoever you call as a lesser splanchnic nerve. It is trying to enter into the superior mesenteric ganglion. Here the presynaptic fibers will end the postsynaptic fibers will join the superior mesenteric plexus around the origin of the superior mesenteric artery and will run again as a periarterial plexus around the branches of this main artery and will reach the midgut and definitely will supply the derivatives of the midgut. Now you can see that T12 from here the nerve commences and it becomes uh, after passing through the sympathetic ganglia it is known as the least splanchnic nerve it will also join the superior mesenteric ganglia as a presynaptic uh, nerve here uh, now the postsynaptic fibers they are joining the this uh, again superior mesenteric plexus and around the periarterial plexus it will reach the midgut and its derivative to supply. Now you can see what happens with this lumbar region. L1, 2, 3, spinal cord segment. From here, fibers commence and uh, passing through the sympathetic trunk as a lumbar splanchnic nerve. It will join as a presynaptic uh, fiber to reach the inferior mesenteric ganglion. From here, the postsynaptic fibers will join the inferior mesenteric plexus, which is again around the origin of the inferior mesenteric artery and uh, will commence as a, a periarterial plexus to reach into the hindgut and will definitely supply the hindgut derivatives. That was all about this uh, sympathetic system, which you call it as thoraco lumbar outflow. Now you can see all this green map going to supply your this elementary tract or abdominal viscera, abdominal pelvic viscera I would say. Now we have to focus on the parasympathetic supply 
uh, for here you can see this blue line coming from the medulla oblongata this uh, main and longest nerve cranial nerve called the vagus nerve uh, it will uh, begin and it will run forward and uh, after uh, passing through the diaphragmatic opening and it will join the the celiac plexus and uh, will not synapse here rather it will commence forward to reach into the foregut to supply the wall and from here the postsynaptic uh, fibers will supply the derivatives of this foregut and all the viscera's. The major supply is from this vagus nerve which is going to supply the foregut and its posterior trunk that will commence downwards to enter into the superior mesenteric plexus and from here it will supply the midgut uh, and its derivatives. So now what happens to the sacral region that is S1, 2, 3 sacral spinal cord segment from here the combination of the fibers will form a nerve called as pelvic splenic nerve which is quite different from the above mentioned sympathetic nerve it is a this pelvic splenic nerve is a parasympathetic nerve and as a sacral outflow of the parasympathetic system it will join here you can see the plexus around the uh, internal ileic arteries on both sides you call them as inferior hypogastric plexus and it will uh, join this plexus and from here it will run through the two main nerves bilaterally present called as hypogastric nerves and uh, through here it has to reach into the superior hypogastric plexus which is present at the bifurcation of the aorta means superior hypogastric plexus the hypogastric nerves which are going to give rise the inferior hypogastric plexus they are present here and the pelvic splenic nerve is ascending through this inferior hypogastric plexus and through this hypogastric nerve it will commence it through the superior hypogastric plexus and then into the inferior mesenteric plexus it has to reach to the hindgut and its derivatives. So the parasympathetic uh, system you can call it as craniosacral outflow and you can see the map it is going to spy your abdominal viscera. Thank you very much.